Hi, Luke here with CatsandCarp.com, and I'm here with THE Chris Flores from <laughs> Muddy River Catfishing here, and we're in Kentucky, so a state neither one of us are from, and uh, we're here for uh, Steve Douglas's catfishing conference, and uh, we're excited, and we're taking this opportunity to get to know Chris here. So I've got uh, a series of interview questions here for <laughs> Mr. Flores, and we're gonna we're gonna get to know him a little bit better. <laughs> and, and also, in case you don't know, you know he has the best catfishing YouTube channel out there. So if you want to learn about <laughs> catfishing, this is the man. So well, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, so Mr. Flores, uh -huh. what's your favorite bait? That's the question we always get, right? Favorite bait, yeah. Well, uh, that's a tricky question. Uh, I do have a video talking about the best bait or the secret to finding the best bait. And uh, what I've come up with is you have to pay attention to what's going on in that particular body of water. If you've got, if you've got a body of water that, uh, let's say these big rivers where these guys are, are using cut, you know, skipjack and whatnot, those big chunks of skipjack may not work in your body of water, you know. And uh, let's say you're pond fishing, you take the skipjack, you throw it in there, these, these pond fish don't know what it is. And, I mean, they may bite it, you know, but they, they're probably farm-raised fish that are stocked in there. They grew up eating pellets and stuff. That's, that's why I say, well, feed them pellets, you know. And then there's that saying, match the hatch. And I, I, I have a, a video talking about how to make, take these pellets, grind them up, make a dough bait, and you're giving the fish what they grew up on, what they're used yeah. to eating, you know. But if you ask me what my favorite bait is or what I like, I, I usually take three, three baits with me. Number one would be fresh cut bait. Mm. Uh, number two would be mm, this chicken liver chum bait recipe that I have. And, uh, the world famous <laughs> chicken <laughs> chum bait. Yeah, and... Uh, the theory behind that is it it excites the fish, it gets them enticed to bite. Yeah. And the third one would be fresh shrimp. Huh. I, yeah. I uh, some people say let let shrimp sit out and let it rot in the sun in three days in a week, or let it smell like death, or you know. Not, first of all, I don't want stuff like that in my boat. Yeah, that's that's for single guys. Yeah. If you're married, you can only get away with that once or twice. Yeah. And I I jokingly say this but it's it's seriously it's true i'll keep it so fresh that if i don't catch fish on it i could throw it on the grill later that night and yeah. eat it you know i keep it on ice yeah. and with those three baits i usually produce some fish no matter what the scenario is let me ask you this what what tool do you think has done the most to improve your fishing and you know what what piece of equipment do you think has really done the most good for actually catching fish you know, people ask me, what's your best fishing rod and what's your best fishing reel and what's... And I think that it's not really so much your rod or your reel as much as a good, a good line and the proper setting on your drag. Because mm. uh, I've seen, you know, even Steve Douglas has a video where he caught a, I don't know how big that catfish was, but I'm, it was in the double digits, and he caught on a Barbie rod, you know? You don't have to make yeah. it expensive. Right. So we do that because we want to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, so my thing is, is, and I'm probably the worst at it, and it, it, you know, it's one of those do as I say, not as I do things, but <laughs> check your drag and, and replace your line, you know, at least once a year or mm. something like that, you know? Well, let me ask you this, uh, Chris. If you couldn't fish, if you were banned from fishing for life and suicide wasn't a way out, what would you do? What was your hobbies? What would your hobby be? What would I do if I couldn't fish? Yeah. Is there anything else to do like besides fish? Take Prozac. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Self-medicate. I'd don't probably know. be in a padded room banging my head against <laughs> the wall. That's what I'd do. So now to one of the more probing questions All right. here. If uh, you had... Fifty thousand dollars right now. Oh man! What would you buy? <laughs> Not, oh, there's this boat that I just fell in love with. It's this red and white epic boat that they have at uh, Jeff Jones Marine here at the Catfish Conference. It's parked right on the corner. Practically has my name written on it. I can see it, you know, subliminally, of course. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I just slap down the cash right there and 
walk away with that book. Oh. How about this? If you could go anywhere in the world, if you could get a trip, okay, anywhere in the world to chase any type of species, what would you mm -hmm. fish for and where would you do it? You know, I've seen those uh, Wells catfish and uh, old uh, Yuri, is, I believe his name Yuri. Yeah, Grisendi. That, yeah. yeah, Yuri Grisendi, he's got that catfishing around the world. Yeah. And he, yeah. I think he holds a record at like 200 and. 60 or 200 uh, I think it's over like 280. 280? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it was over the Po River in Italy. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Man, I'd like to get down there one day and just experience that. Yeah, that's I, 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 that, I, that's an excellent choice. <laughs> Let's plan a trip. Let's do it. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Well, listen, you do a lot of bank fishing and you've done a lot of boat fishing, right? Mm -hmm. So, is a boat really that necessary like when you were bank fishing and you don't own a boat you think a boat will solve all your problems no you know uh, a boat of course it helps you get access to places that you wouldn't get to on a on a bank but uh, if you if you kind of learn how where the fish are going to be and where to find them essentially these holes aren't normally where I fish anyways, they're not in the middle of the river. They're, they're either on the edge of the yeah. bank. It's where that current hits the bank and digs out the hole. And it's like what people say with bass fishermen, you know, when you're on the bank, you cast out in the middle and when you're in the boat, you cast out exactly, the shore. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. It's the same concept. So, uh, well, that's one thing people ask me when, when I, when they're about the river, they ask me, Hey, well, how do you, how do you, cast your line out in the middle of the river and fish and keep your bait there because I do that and it drags it back. I said, I never fish the middle of the river. Yeah, yeah. I never cast to the middle of the river. Yeah. I said, my casts are probably like four or five feet out, you know, yeah. as long as I know where that hole is, that's where I want it. I want it where, where that bank is, where, where that deep spot is, where the fish are hiding. Well, what, what got you into fishing? How, how'd you get into fishing? Well, as interesting is, is, uh, my dad was, is the one who got me into fishing. You know, he started taking me when I was just a kid, and you know, like they say, you get hooked on it. And but the funny thing about that is, my dad didn't know how to fish until he met my mom. Really? Yeah. My my mom would go camping with my grandparents all the time. They'd go out. There's a lake called Caballo Lake, just south of Elephant Butte. It's not as big. It, they'd go over there and they'd camp on the riverside and. And uh, my mom grew up with that. So when she met my dad, uh, she talked him into going fishing and he got into it. Well, then he took me. So that's kind of how, how it went about. <laughs> oh, I like that. If your wife gets you into fishing, she can't blame you for exactly. going fish out there. Exactly. Well, honey, you're the one who told me how to do, show me how to do this. Meet a woman that you're interested in. You invite her on her first date. You don't tell her what you're going to do, and you take her fishing. If she calls you the day after, you got to keep her, you know? Otherwise, keep on looking. Otherwise, catch and release. Yeah, catch, catch and release. release. Don't live it up. <laughs> what, what's one type of fishing that you've never done and you've always wanted to try? Mm, you know those, uh, a little bit of salt water, I like to get out there and those, I've seen those Goliath groupers. That oh, they catch. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They're using bait like, you know, this big, and they're <laughs> dropping them by the piers. And man, you just see those rods, and they hold, they're holding each other, trying to <laughs> go overboard, you know? That, that is universally cool. I agree yeah. with you. That, that looks pretty cool. Yeah. That would be awesome, you know? Those things are what, 600 pounds or something crazy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah they, they, they were ridiculous. I don't even know how you would weigh it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, those are, yeah, I agree with you on that one. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. Well, thanks for letting me uh, pick your brain and ask you a few questions, and I'm excited to go to this uh, catfish co uh, conference tomorrow. All right, I appreciate you having me, Luke. And don't forget to check out Muddy River Catfishing uh, with Chris Flores if you haven't done so already. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to click subscribe. Thanks. Good deal. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>